Angular 2 is a JavaScript framework for building client-side applications on the web, on the desktop, and even native mobile apps. I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching Pluralsight's Angular 2 Breakdown. The web applications you create with Angular 2 are known as single-page applications. Unlike typical web applications, where you click and wait for the next page to load, an Angular 2 app gives you an experience similar to a desktop or mobile application where it feels like the app resides on a single page. Inside an Angular 2 web app, our site is divided into parts called components. If we look inside these components, we'll see it's made up of three parts. The first is the component template, containing HTML, which gets rendered to the page. Next is the class, which contains properties and methods which are pulled into the template and then rendered onto the page. The last is metadata, which tells Angular that this class and template make up our component. Inside this metadata can be something called a selector. This selector is a custom HTML tag, also known as a directive, that can be used to tell our Angular 2 app where to load which components onto our page. This is just one way Angular 2 makes HTML more expressive. As you might imagine, it also has things like if conditions, for loops, and data binding, which I've got to show you. When I want to print out a component property into my HTML, I can bind this data into the page using an expression. Whenever this value gets updated inside the component, it's automatically updated into the template. However, when I want to bind to any HTML element's attribute, like source, for instance, all I have to do is wrap that element in square brackets like so. This works with almost any standard HTML element attribute. When it comes to listening for events, like a mouse click or mouse hover event, like on this image, I simply write the name of the DOM event I want to listen for, surrounded by parentheses. So now when the mouse hovers over this image, the image hover method gets called inside the class file. This works with any standard DOM event. You just wrap it in parentheses. Just another example of how Angular 2 enhances our HTML. Lastly, it's worth mentioning that most Angular 2 developers aren't coding in JavaScript, they're coding in TypeScript. TypeScript is Microsoft's superset of JavaScript that adds new features of JavaScript that aren't yet supported in modern browsers. Plus, it adds functionality, including powerful type checking and some new object-oriented features. What this means is that back on the server, before your Angular 2 app is sent to anyone's browser, the TypeScript code you wrote is changed or transpiled into JavaScript code that modern browsers can understand. It's this code which will be sent when someone requests your web page. You've been watching Pluralsight's Angular 2 Breakdown. If you want to learn more about Angular 2 and make sure it's right for you or your company, consider checking out my interview with Deborah Carrada on Behind the Tech. Deborah is Pluralsight's author on the Angular 2 Getting Started course. You also might just want to take her course on Pluralsight, or you could even take my course on Code School that covers Angular 2. Thanks for watching. And client not the side applications. Will we do it? Who knows? Here we go. I don't know. And I'm probably going too fast. I gotta slow down. Explaining. We're just like giving you a little bit. Not a lot. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself.